love, sex, desire, drama, lovers, and the others. <laughs> and we talk about it all here on Relationship. Greetings and welcome to Relationship Rhetoric. I'm your host, Unapologetically Angela. And on the show today, we have a brother that I have been trying to get on the show since the summertime. But we were just having a conversation about how wonderful the universe is and how we got this show lined up right before his album release. Welcome to the show, Tarek Turner, better known to us as J.R. Truth. Thank you for having me. It's Thank you. To be here. I am so I'm so excited about having you just at this time because this is a wonderful opportunity for us to really hear about who J.R. Truth really is. So with that being said, talk to me about how the name J.R. Truth came up. The name J.R. Truth came about because originally I was performing just as Rico. My middle name is Enrico. I was going by just Rico. Okay. There was another guy around there performing, uh, Rico Fields, who also performed as Rico, but his was an acronym. So originally I was like, well, you know, won't be a big deal to Rico. So I saw him perform. Mm. I was like, you know what, let me get my own thing. Because <laughs> okay. he kind of got this Rico thing sold up. Uh, shout out to Rico Fields, Negro Terror. Appreciate you guys so much, you know, showing me love. Uh, we actually got a show coming up November 1st. I saw that. Yeah, okay. Negro Terror, myself, Hanging Chaos, some dude at the High Tone. It's going to be dope. Okay. Halloween Hangover. Bring your costume. Nice. No need to wear them just one day. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so you came from Rico. And so what were you, were you tabling an idea? What made you, because truth is such a powerful statement. So the JR Truth came about because uh, my co-workers called me JR, like an abbreviation for Junior. Okay. Uh, I work for my dad and uh, I resemble him a lot so they started calling me Junior. Got cut down to JR so all day I'm hearing JR, JR. On the other side of that I'm performing. People ask me, so what's your name? I say Rico. Just Rico? Just Rico. So one day it clicked JR. Just Rico. My whole thing is like I'm just Rico speaking my truth. Hmm. Um, and I try to write about things that are, you know, relatable that the audience can understand. But at the same time, I don't have to write about anything I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm not a street dude. I never mm-hmm. sold drugs, any of that. I don't write about those kinds of things. I try to stay true to who I am and what I know. Just write about what I see, what I feel. And uh, that's where it came from. Just Rico. Speaking okay. my truth. I like that. Okay. Um. So aside from J.R. Truth, who is... The artist. Tell us about Tarek, his upbringing. Are you from Memphis? and Born and raised right here in Memphis. Okay. Um, you know, pretty upper middle class kind of family. Okay. Uh, quiet, nerdy kind of kid. I was always in the house reading or, you know, watching cartoons, playing Sega. Like, I'm an old gamer. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tarek is, you know, quiet, sensitive kind of guy, pretty, you know, withdrawn. Uh, definitely, I would say, like, Tarek writes the songs. Rico will get on stage and perform them. JR is like, let's make an album and try to make some money. Oh, this. okay. That's okay. kind of how it breaks down. Okay, okay. Because uh, Rico definitely was interested. That's why I was using the stage name Rico, because um, I guess it's kind of how my personality split up. There's Tarek, there's Rico, there's JR. So Rico already wanted to perform. JR decided to, you know, just take a little further than that. Okay. Nice. It's nice to hear somebody willing to say they have a lot more personalities inside of them. So oh, yeah. nice. Um, so talk to us about how the music began. What was going on? What were you doing before this? And then when you realized that it was your passion, what was happening? I first started writing when I was in about like the seventh grade. Um, uh, it was when I was first introduced to Nas. Mm-hmm. And Nas to me was like the closest to a poet I had heard in hip hop, you know, at that time. And um, so it became as a way to just express things, things I felt like I couldn't tell anybody else I would write about. Them. Um, 
And I always just have enjoyed music. I'm a guy of always a very, you know, diverse taste. Like, you know, I'm a big fan of Nas. I love Prince. You know, Prince music is all over the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So that opened me up to a lot of different things, you know, rock, jazz, funk, from listening to Prince. And um, later, as I decided to actually do music myself, I wanted to incorporate all those different things into my sound. But um, originally, like, I just wrote just like it was just therapy, mm -hmm. uh, just a way to express myself. It wasn't until I was in, like, my mid-20s, I decided to actually give it a shot performing, you know, and being, like, a performing artist. I, I just had words on the page. Okay. I had never actually performed anywhere until I was, like, 25. You know, life's short. You got to take the shot. Exactly. So that first performance, what was that like? Nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely nerve-wracking. I See, I had two first performances. Okay. So the first time I was 25, I went to an open mic, and I got up there, and I mumbled through my first verse and forgot the second one. No one could really hear me because I wasn't in the mic. It did not go well at okay. all. My second debut <laughs> was at Soul Speak, and I had worked up a little more nerve. Mm -hmm. And uh, the atmosphere there was just a lot more welcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Soul Speak is a small, intimate kind of venue. And most of the crowd are also performers, so like they know how you feel. Because exactly. they remember their first time getting up on the mic, and it's very, uh, it's a very nurturing environment. So that one went much better. Okay. I actually pre performed the same song at both times, but the second was definitely a, a better run at it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, with you being the writer and the performer. Has being an artist uh, had any effect on any other part of your life as far as maintaining balance, relationships, work, anything like that? I've been fortunate to be in relationships where, you know, my partner's understood that he's an artist. He has to go rehearse, record, perform. Uh, you know, best thing you do is come with me mm -hmm. while I'm doing these things or you might end up, you know, spending a lot of time alone. Um, it's affected work a lot. Because, you know, I say it's a family-owned business, a small business, so I have a lot of responsibility in that. But at the same time, you know, I have to pursue my own personal passions. Absolutely. Um, it's the difference between living and existing. Absolutely. For a long time, I was just existing, you know, working, paying bills. That got monotonous and frustrating. I wanted to actually live. So, like, I live to get off work and go do what I do, be it, you know, recording, rehearsing, whatever. I'm just like, okay, day's over. Let me go mm -hmm. be a rock star. You gotcha. Know? And that, that gives me strength to get through the next day. Okay. You know what I mean? Because it's like I get this charge, this verse of life, and then I can go to work and not be frustrated and angry. You know, I can actually enjoy it because I have something to look forward to afterwards. Okay. If that makes sense. It does, definitely. Um, so let's talk about your writing process. How do you prepare yourself or when you have the inspiration to write what's happening? It's it's something that's kind of come like I might be at work and see something or hear something and it might inspire, you know, a couple of bars. Mm -hmm. I have to try to remember it so I get home. Then you kind of try to, you know, find um, something musically that fits not only, you know, the rhythm of what you're saying because it's hip hop but also emotionally, mm -hmm. what you're trying to convey. Um, so for me, it, it can either start from, you know, it's a random thought, idea, or it might actually be a piece of music that I hear and be like, okay, I want to do something with that. You know, I, I hear like a random guitar riff, you know, and a jazz song, and be like, hey, play it back. And listen to it again, and it might make me feel some kind of way. And then it's like, okay, I want to write about how I felt when I heard this because it's going to be dope. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, we need to do something with that. So my writing process is just random inspiration, I guess you would okay. say. Whatever strikes me first. It might be the lyrics, might be the music, might just be a feeling. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the album that is about to be released, Uncharted. Uncharted. Talk to me about the title and the passion that went into this particular album. So the idea with Uncharted, I just wanted to do things that I hadn't previously tried. Okay. Um, like I do, there's a lot of rock music incorporated into what I do. And for a while, I felt like it was kind of holding me back. Like a lot of um, 
the hip hop audience couldn't connect because musically, you know, like, you know, it's all these guitars and stuff, and uh-huh. the drums. And so I almost decided to do like a more traditional hip hop sound. Mm-hmm. And then one day I was just like, fuck that. Like, <laughs> I'm going to do me. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, it was the words of um, Al Capone, mm-hmm. who was doing an interview with Ton at Radio Memphis. And um, he had met me at last year's Soulsville Festival. And I gave him a copy of my CD. He actually listened to it, told me he enjoyed it. And um, Ton asked him what advice would he give upcoming artists. And he actually mentioned me. He was like, you know, actually like J.R. True. I'll tell anybody, just keep doing what you do. Just keep putting your stamp and find your audience. Don't try to cater to an audience. Find the audience that caters to you. Mm. So with that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to rock even harder. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So my first album was more inspired by, like, early 90s, you know, grunge, like Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, things of that nature. This album, I wanted to go more for a Limp biscuit, corn. Nine Inch Nails, like a more metal kind of vibe. And also just, you know, touch on topics I hadn't done before. Like, I have a twerk song on this album. I don't, you know, <laughs> really do that kind of thing. But I was like, you know what, well, fuck it, I'm going to go for it. Uh-huh. I had a hook in my head that I had written off of a Waka Flocka mm-hmm. song, of all people. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to just ride with it. Instead of trying to be like, nah, I don't do that kind of thing. You know, why limit yourself? Do whatever you want to do. So... Yeah, like Molly Crew made stripper music. Absolutely. So absolutely. <laughs> take a little hair metal and a little little John and <laughs> see you what you come up with. Song. Yeah. Okay. So if you had to choose your favorite song on this upcoming album, what would it be? My favorite song is definitely the uh, the first song recorded for the first single that was released it's called Mosh Life. Mosh Life. Um, it's one of the things where the universe just kind of came together. Mm-hmm. I was riding around at work. I was thinking to myself, I wonder why they ever did like a trap song, but like with a metal feel. Uh, my producer, Timothy Davis, hit me up. was like, hey, I got this track for you. It's like, it's like some trap shit, but like metal. I was like, you know, I was literally just thinking that. <laughs> and he let me hear it. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling this. You know, let me see what I can do with it. And it ended up being about you know, like moshing, the act of moshing, people be like, you know, these crazy white boys mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> pushing each other. But I mean, if you black, you in the South, you was listening to 3 Six Mafia, you was throwing bowls, you know, that's a mosh pit too. Exactly. We just don't really call it that. So I was trying to kind of merge the two cultures for one and then explain kind of the psychology behind it. Like, to be willing to put yourself in that kind of physical danger, mm. you have to be in a certain mindset. You have to have some things you need to get off of your chest. And you just have to be around like-minded people. So, you know, you might get pushed up, bruised a little bit, but it's worth it because you come out feeling like, mm-hmm. <sighs> like I actually, um, I kind of made a reference to like a religious kind of feeling. Like, you know, I feel free. I'm getting saved. Stand in front of me. You're going to catch a fade. Like, mm-hmm. like, I'm just... Okay. Like this is like church for me. This mm-hmm. is this is me getting in the spirit and letting that out, letting that negativity out. Absolutely. Because that's all it is: bottle up anger, aggression. These are negative things. You can't just ignore them. People like to be like, oh, positive vibes only. Nothing in this world exists without its opposite. Absolutely. So just as there are positive vibes, there's also negative. You can't choose to ignore them. You have to find healthy ways to express them. So. That's kind of what that song was about. Okay. And that's my favorite because it's, it's definitely a mosh pit song. That's nice. Nice. Okay, so I asked off the air, were you single or not? And you said not. I'm not. Okay, which is nice. <laughs> um, your support system, as far as your relationship goes, is your partner supportive, helpful in any way in your craft? Very much so. Like, understanding about, like I said, the time issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, very supportive, like, in the creative process. Okay. You know, like, hey, listen to this, tell me what you think, you know, and I get honest critiques. And I, I appreciate that because how am I supposed to grow as an artist if everybody's always telling me everything I do is great? Right. It's, it's definitely not. You know, sometimes as an artist, you know, we, we get sensitive about our shit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you might get kind of upset, like, what you mean? It ain't, you know. Right. Like, but you have to put your ego aside mm-hmm. and focus on, you know, making the best art you can make. 
especially in the case of where, you know, you're trying to do this not just as an artist, but, you know, as a business. Like, I want to be able to make a living making music. You have to make music that appeals to people. You can't just make stuff that just you like. Right. So having other people's insights can let you know, you know, give you a feel on how the general public will react to uh, to your art. So, yeah, that's very, very helpful. Very good. Because I've noticed, because I was uh, married to a musician, and it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a different type of relationship being with an artist, period. Yeah. So... Um, to have someone that can balance and understand that it's work after work yeah. and long hours of work yeah. is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful connection. Um, so tell us about the album release event. Give us time, dates, how we can find information out about it. Okay, you can find information about it. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, JR Truth 901 I got music out on SoundCloud now. Again, JR Truth 901 the album release is going to be November the 4th. It's going to be at Aces Sports Bar. That's 5221 Summer Avenue. We'll be starting at 9 o'clock. We got um, Pharaoh Uchia, very dope female MC. Uh, we got a Big Biz, the MC, is going to be in the house. Ashanti Johnson, one of my favorite comedians, one of my favorite people, is going to be hosting it. We got a DJ JD is going to be you know supplying the tune. So it's just going to be a party. We're going to have a good time. I will play. I'm gonna perform all the tracks from the new album okay. live, which is a bit daunting because it'll be my first time <laughs> performing some of them. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'll keep it together, and um, yeah, we're gonna have fun. We got food, drinks at the bar, okay. and it's only five dollars, so you will oh, have money to still drink and eat. That's nice, <laughs> yeah. nice. And you seem very excited about it when we talk about it. Your face lights up, so I am. I'm, I'm really. I'm really proud of this project. I put a lot of time and effort into it. And I like I believe I achieved what I was looking for to to go to, you know, uncharted regions of my artistry. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what the title Uncharted is about. Like we're just gonna go some different places, we're gonna do some new things. Okay. So if you could give advice to an upcoming artist who is trying to get in those uncharted waters, what would it be? The thing I was talking about, letting go of ego, um, putting yourself to the side, you know, because we can limit ourselves. You start overthinking things. Mm. Uh, I know I'm guilty of that. I've <laughs> thought my way out of a lot of good <laughs> <Yes>. situations. <laughs> yes. Um, but putting yourself to the side and just letting the art speak to you. If you believe in what you're doing, pursue it and pursue it to the fullest. Don't. You know, be like, oh, no, I can't do that, do this. No, don't, like, go there. Don't be afraid to just go there, wherever there is. Mm-hmm. If you don't know where there is, go find out. It, mm-hmm. might, it might be a good thing for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think with a lot of us, the biggest thing is the fear. Yeah. You know, and we create it. Like we just said, mm-hmm. we create it. So I thank you so much. Thank you. I thank you. I cannot, I cannot wait. I just... When I've seen you out in so many places, I'm just like, this is such an interesting cat. Then I've seen you perform, and Tundri was like, you have to talk to him. He would not believe the things that he would say. And so I am really glad we had this opportunity. I appreciate it. And that. I'm going to do my best. I will be promoting this show all week long. Thank you. And I look forward to supporting you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Our notion for today is the truth sometimes feels like hate if you're not willing and ready to handle the truth. This has been Unapologetically Angela. Peace, love, and enlightenment. Love. Sex. Desire. Drama. Lovers. And the others. And we talk about it all here on Relationship.